there, Phillies and Gentle Colts. This here is Glimmer Zephyr bringing to you another reading by Vertigo 22. The Grim Reaper visits Ponyville Elementary. As always, we will be joined with Storm Blossom for commentary at the end. Today's story is a sequel to A Lay in the Life of the Grim Reaper. That falls into the categories of comedy and dark. So let's go ahead and get right into it with another 40,000 coming every day. On a chilly autumn morning in Canterlot, Princess Celestia sat on her throne as she sipped a bit of tea when she felt the air around her get cold. Is that you, Grimmy? She asked with a smirk. Why do you insist on calling me that? The Grim Reaper asked with a sigh. And what did you want? Well, for starters, I think the name is cute. Celestia said as she placed her tea on a nearby tray. And second, I received word that the students of Canterlot Middle School loved your letter to them. The Grim Reaper stared blankly at Celestia for, for a few minutes before he finally asked, And now, what did they really think of it? Well, they thought it was a prank before I confirmed it was from the real Grim Reaper at which point most panicked at the thought they had read a letter from death, Celestia said. So I quelled their fears by saying that he wasn't going to kill them. And then? I'm 90% sure I'm going to be sued for suggesting that you send a letter to a bunch of middle schoolers, Celestia said sheepishly. But I have an even better idea to help with your social anxiety. Celestia, it isn't social anxiety. Anxiety. Grimmy, I know what I'm doing. No, you don't. Celestia sighed. Listen, I just want to help you, she said. No, the Reaper said. Please, just take my advice here, Celestia said. The Grim Reaper let out a heavy sigh. Okay, fine. What did you have in mind? Celestia smiled. Okay. Here's my idea. Go talk to Miss Charlie's class in Ponyville, she said. Perhaps speaking to a class of foals will... Wait, 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 the Reaper said. Did you just say a class of foals? Trust me, it'll help you become better at talking to other ponies. You realize I'm literally death, right? And when I have I ever failed you, Celestia said. Besides, have you checked your list lately? The Reaper summoned a parchment and looked it over. How did you know about this? He asked as he sent it away. Well, I might have snuck into your house a few days ago, Celestia said as she blushed slightly. I swear, I didn't look at anything else. The Reaper shook his head. Fine. I'll go do this only because my job will require me to do so anyway. He said, just send a letter stating they'll have a special speaker. Will do, Celestia said. Thank you. The Reaper said, just as he was about to teleport away, a thought hit him. Wait, how will they be able to see me? Celestia levitated a scroll over to the Reaper. Use that, she said. The Reaper nodded. Before I forget, should this fail, I swear that I don't quite know, but I will do something. With that, the Reaper teleported away. Celestia levitated her tea back over to her. No, you won't, she said with a chuckle. A few days later, Miss Charlie stood at the front of her classroom with a smile. Now students, she said, today we are going to have a very special speaker. Who is it? Apple Bloom asked. Is it Princess Luna? Well, that's the thing, she said as her smile faltered. Even I'm not sure. 
All I was told is there be a very special guest who's going to speak to you all. Just then, there was a knock at the classroom door. Tara Lee walked over to the door and opened it, which revealed a terrifying sight. The Grim Reaper, who simply said, Hey, are you Miss Tara Lee? Tara Lee and the rest of the class screamed. She went to shut the door, but the Reaper stuck his scythe in an opening and forced the door back open. I'm not here to take any of you away, he said. Now, allow me to ask again, are you Miss Cheryl Lee? Yes, I am, Cheryl Lee said as she slowly backed away from the cloaked pony. Now may I ask why you're here? Well, after Princess Celestia heard about the ro rousing success that was my letter to Canterlot Middle School, she suggested I speak to some foals face to face that's hidden behind a cloak. The Reaper said, so I picked here. The Reaper walked to the front of the classroom and faced the class. Now, here's how this is going to work. You're each allowed to ask one question. Rule free, and I'll answer it. How does that sound? The foals nervously cheered. Well, it's better than nothing, the Reaper thought. He pointed a bony hoof at Scootaloo and said, You first. Scootaloo jumped in her seat. Uh, oh. She tapped her chin and thought for a bit. How old are you? Older than your princesses, the Reaper said. I have been here since the beginning of time, and will be here until it ends. Wait, so you knew Celestia and Luna's parents, Scooter asked. Hey, only one question allowed, the Reaper snapped. And that said, yes, yeah, I did. Does this mean we all get two questions now, Pips asked. The Reaper stomped up on the ground. Enough! He yelled, his voice echoing throughout the classroom. I specifically stated that you may ask one question, and only one. Is that understood? Yes, the class said. Excuse me, Charlie said. You don't have to be so harsh on them. They're only foals. The Reaper let out a sigh. Well, you're right. The closest I get to interacting with another pony is poking them and watching them keel over. So, excuse me if me speaking to you and your class is as good as a corpse's ability to digest food. He said, anyways, let's continue. You, with the pink mane, he said, as he pointed to Sweetie Belle. Sweetie Belle jumped and nervously looked at the Reaper. Uh, I've always heard that you're supposed to be dead. She said, if that's the case, then how can we see you? Your princess gave me a spell that allows me to be seen by all, rather than a poor soul who's about to be placed six feet under and cost her family a fortune. He said, it's honestly the nicest thing she's done to me since the time she baked cookies for me almost two centuries ago. The reaper pointed to a cream-coated foal and said, Okay, your turn, Apple Bloom. Apple Bloom let out a squeak and shook as she sank down in her chair. Tears welled up in her eyes as she st stared at the cloaked pony. I, I know what you want to ask, and to answer it, you own a farm. I'm familiar with your family, the Reaper said. Just last week, week, I came by because it was one of your chickens' time. Apple Bloom took a deep breath and regained her composure. Well, um, my question for you is, what were Celestia and Luna's parents like? Not much different than Celestia and Luna are now, the Reaper said. Well, except for the fact that they're dead. And before you ask, it was food poisoning both of them. The chef was promptly thrown in the dungeon, he said. I think he did it on purpose. But don't tell Celestia that. She always throws a tantrum. Um, Mr. Reaper, 
Charlie said. Are you sure it's appropriate to be telling false this kind of stuff? First off, just call me Graham, the Reaper said. Second, yes, I do. I mean, come on. They all know they're going to die someday. Darylise sat back down in her seat inside. She rested her head against a hoof and watched as the Reaper pointed a bony hoof at Diamond Tiara. Uh, yes, my question is, since you said that you took away a chicken from Apple Bloom, do you take all animal souls, or just ones owned by ponies as pets or cattle? I take any and all souls, ones wild and domesticated animals, and plants, the Reaper said. If I touch a tree, it'll wither and die, which sucks since I'd really love to have a tulip garden. The Reaper pointed at Silver Spoon. Okay, you're next. Silver Spoon ducked under her desk and shook. So, I'm too young to die, she said. I meant you're next to ask a question, the Reaper groaned. I can tell you when we'll next meet. Silver Spoon's eyes widened. No, no thank you, she said. My question for you, though, is where did the depiction of you as an alicorn come from? Most immortal beings are shown to be alicorns, the Reaper said. So, I guess... Yes, the idea came to be that I was one. Quite honestly, I'm glad I'm not one, as I'd have to get my cloak changed, and that'd make me it look really dumb. My sister could always make you a nice one, Sweetie Belle said with a smile. Isn't your sister the one who cried for three weeks when I took her pet bunny away from her when she was little? She had a dress and everything on it. It looked ridiculous. And I couldn't take it with me, so I had to fight to undress it. Wait, Rarity had a pet bunny? Sweetie Belle asked over the laughter of the class. She had quite a few over her full hood, the Reaper said. One of them even became rabid. Believe me, it was a laugh a minute each time I had to collect one. Drama queens of the best. Although, you've asked three questions so far. Am I allowed to send you to the principal's office? No, Graham. You can't. Charlie moaned. Dominant, the Reaper said. Anyways, you with the blonde mane and goofy eyes, what's your question? My question is, are you a ghost? Ditsy do ask with a smile. Whoa, finally someone who didn't freak out. I like you, kid. Anyways. Thanks, Mr. Reaper. Ditsy blurted out. Okay, I take some of that back, he grunged. Anyways, no, I'm not really a ghost so much as a manifestation of death itself. Hence why everything I touch dies. Even the princesses? Dizzy asked in awe. Yes, if I touched the princesses, they'd kill over. The Reaper said with a hint of irritation. Now you with the eye patch and bandana, what's your question? Oh boy! Pipsqueak said happily. My question for you is, do you ever attend the funerals of those you take away? The Reaper tilted his head. Um, kid? I don't know what to think of that question, he said. That's both the dumbest thing I've ever been asked, and the most interesting thing to answer. To answer your question, though, no, I haven't. Because I'm usually somewhere else, he said, which I'm thankful for, since I've heard that funerals are extremely boring and full of crying and grieving, which I deal with enough. Pipsqueak sloshed in his chair. Okay, he said. Oh, come on, don't be sad. The Reaper said, your question is probably going to be the highlight of this entire thing. Pipsqueak's face lit up. Really? He asked with a large smile. Yeah, the Reaper said. Okay, your turn, as he pointed to Twist. Ask away. What's your favorite color? 
octopus asked Teal. Really? Yes. Cool. The reaper shook his head and pointed to a blue earth pony filly. Okay, okay, little filly, you're next. The filly gulped. Uh, who's your favorite princess? She asked briefly. The new flurry heart. She's adorable. And will make that sore loser cadence miserable, the reaper said. That'll teach her to whine every time I kick her flank and poker. Um, uh, yeah. My favorite Celestia, the filly said. That's nice, the reaper said as he pointed to Snips. Okay, you. Question. Oh, brother, you're really going to ask him? Charlie asked weakly. What's wrong, Miss Charlie? Sweetie Belle asked. Are you sick? I'm okay, Sweetie Belle. Charlie responded. Just must have eaten something bad. Hey, pipe down. I can't hear what I'm being asked, the Reaper snapped. Repeat the question, little guy. I asked what your favorite food is. Bagels. Really? Are you the male version of that filly from earlier? I don't think so. Alrighty then, he said as he pointed a bony hoof to snails. What's your question? Do you like cookies? Charlie, is your class full of clones? N no, Charlie replied weakly. But I think I'm going to puke. The Reaper levitated a bucket over to her. There you go, he said as he observed a few folds whisper to each other. Now what's your question really, little guy? He asked as he pointed to a skinny white Pegasus. Um, well, I'd like to know. Do you ever feel remorse when you take some pony away? For the way past. Nope. The Reaper answered. Once you've been doing this for as long as I have, you never feel much of anything. Though there were times where I wish the pony's time wasn't up, but I wouldn't call that the same as remorse. Oh well, thanks for answering, Featherweight said. The Reaper nodded and scanned the classroom before he pointed to a tan pony all the way in the back. What about you? Yeah, hi. My name's Ace, the fool said. I don't believe a thing you said all day, he said cockily. If you're really the Reaper, prove it. The Reaper chuckled. Well, I'm gl I'll gladly demonstrate my power, he said. He turned to Miss Charlie and rested a bony hoof on her neck which caused her to drop dead. That good enough for you, kid? The entire class screamed, and some hid under their desks as they whimpered. Is she really dead? Is she really dead? Ace asked as he shook in his seat. Oh yeah, she's gone, the Reaper said. I'll be honest, I only agreed to come here because I had to come by and take her away. But I thought you said you weren't going to kill any pony. Scootaloo yelled. Why'd you lie? Are you for real, kid? The Reaper asked. I'm not going to come here and say that your teacher's going to die before I answer questions. That's just bad manners. He walked over to the classroom door and opened it before waving a hoof to the class. It was class dismissed. With that, the Reaper vanished. Well, fillies and colts, before we get into the actual commentary, I would like to take a moment for Miss Charlie. So, may she rest in peace. Well, anyway, there, fillies and colts, uh, this was definitely one of the more interesting stories that I've done so far, but first off, uh, Storm, do you have anything you wish to say real quick? I do. Celestia is evil. Instead of just asking him to go do his job, she asked Grim to go talk in front of the class and probably scarred them for life. Although, I do like Ace. Yes, 
Ace was definitely a uh, voice I could actually do rather easy. Which brings me up a point that I wanted to make for the commentary in this one. During the reading of this story, I was actually attempting to do various voices for the different characters. And if all you uh, guys out there would uh, be so kind, please uh, let me know how I did. And frankly, I'd appreciate your brutal honesty. If in your ears I royally screwed it up, let me know. Or if I did a good job, let me know that too. Or just any critiques, you know. Uh, but to add what you were, to what you're saying there, there, Storm, uh, I would have to say you're right. Cassia in this one is a bit of an evil, manipulative little <clears throat> witch. Choice words that should never be said in polite company. Yes. And there's a few of them in that sentence. <laughs> I just skipped them. <laughs> yeah, I believe But anyway, it. um... You know, when I first uh, read this story, I honestly thought, you know, that the uh, class pet was going to be what the Reaper was going there for. Not the teacher. So, that one kind of took me by surprise a little bit. Yeah, same here. Poor Miss Shirley. Yes. May Although... she rest in peace. Although, I feel a lot worse for the kids. Yeah, have, watching Death take the life of their teacher. I mean, even though Ace pretty much told him to do it. Prove it! You're not the real Death. I... I honestly don't think he saw that one coming. <laughs> Good point. I mean, I've heard of ponies having some damn good costumes. But to actually make yourself completely skeletal? That's gonna take some magic. <laughs> but then again, not like they don't have plenty of it. No kidding, so, it's a question after all. Yes. So, um, anything else you want to have there, Storm? No, not really. Alright. Uh, well, in that case, this is Glitterbaum signing out. This is Flutterborn Blossom with a friendly reminder to stay stormy. Hey, wait a minute, you took my stick! <laughs>